Steve Ratton. Right, we're going to bend down, yeah? Yeah. Louis Green. What'd you do, Louis? I'm no. a professional boxer. I thought he was a builder. Right, I came up. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Cheryl Podcast with me, Simon Burridge. And me, Rachel Burridge. There we go. God, we're blessed. Mm. First boxer on the show, mate. Nice to meet you. Simon, <laughs> Louis yeah. Green. Rachel. Medway nice Mauler, you. local boy. Before <clears> we start, <throat> how long do you think before that comes off the wall? And 15. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Seconds. Yeah. <laughs> seconds, yeah. 15 <laughs> seconds. Right, we're going to quickly go to our sponsors. We'll be back and we're going to talk to the Medway Mauler, Louis Green. Today's sponsors are Dimidishi Associates, Chartered Structural and Civil Engineers. Based in the UK with a worldwide reach. Visit their website on dimidishiassociates.com. New Digital, helping businesses build their online presence with web design, SEO, Google Ads and social media. Get 10% off when you quote Cherrywood today. Visit their website at nudigitalera.co.uk. Snug Dubs, camper van hire. Roam the world, park anywhere. That's snugdubs.co.uk. Austin's Eatery on Station Road Strood. Try the Viking Challenge. And we're back. Seconds out, <laughs> round two. Ready? Go. On. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Very well. I see, a fight. I see you in a fight. I've got a mate called Amrit who might be waiting in the wings over there, like, a little, like your little promoter. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he is anyway. <laughs> and he showed me this fight. Fucking hell, mate. You're like a Mike. If you don't mind me saying, I thought you it honestly remind me of Tyson the way you went in there and attacked that boy. Yeah. Really good. Really <laughs> pleased. Get it done, mate. Yeah. Yeah. And I did watch that because um, it was the same night as um, Ant- Anthony Joshua against. Um, Garnu, yeah. yeah. Did you get out to watch the fight afterwards? Were you able yeah, to watch was, his fight? I was there. I wanted to watch Zhang and Joseph Parker. Right. Yeah. Because I'd spent a few days when we was over there. I spent a lot of time around uh, Parker. And he's a really lovely fella. So I wanted to watch him and I wanted to watch Zhang in person. Yeah. Okay. See how hard he, he punched. Yeah. Like. Yeah. And did you manage to get out and do it? Yeah, he yeah. fucking really punched. <laughs> yeah, echo, echo in the arena. <gasps> really? Wow. I, couldn't believe, I couldn't believe how hard he hit. So how many rows back were you? When, you? when you're a boxer and you're on that roster, so how, do you get decent seats when well, you're yeah, done? When I, was, when I, I actually was in the, watching it in a, like a back room now. Right. And it was on like a massive screen. I could have sat round the ring, yeah. But I went and sat. They advised me. They said, "Do you want us to come out here?" And I sat there. And when he dropped him on the telly, bang! You could hear it. Wow! Echo through the like the big open hall behind me. Yeah. You, know I mean? you could hear it. The level on the face. <gasps> you heard him go down. Wow! Actually, not fit up. Jeez. The atmosphere over there must have been amazing. It's it, a diff- was, it, it different sort of cheering. Yeah, it, it was, it was different because it was it was actually quiet. It weren't like coming over here where it's rowdy yeah. and it's lively. <laughs> it was very tame. But there was a lot of English there. There was a lot of people from Chatham there because when I got out of out of the ring, a lot of the fellas come up to me. I spar one of the uh, one of the blokes who was I spar on his nephew, and they all come up afterwards. I couldn't believe they was out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did it for you. No, nah, they went over there. They knew I was on the card, obviously. They yeah. went over there. It was just a bonus that I was on the bill. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, all the, all the fellows from Chatham was over there. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. A yeah, bit like the cars got done over. <laughs> 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 so, um, you're Chatham boy. Well, you're actually a Strood boy, aren't you? Yeah. Which is where we film this in Strood. Um, so you it, grew up. It actually Randy. says on the internet, you're from Maidstone. I don't know if you knew that. No, I don't know why it says that. I'm not actually from, I wasn't even raised round here. I was raised in Welling by Shooter's Hill. Oh, and really? then, Not a Chatham boy, are you? No, no, no. <laughs> You're Millwall, weren't you? I used to, I don't laugh at but I used to go to Millwall a lot as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I grew up down there till I was about 13. And then I came up here when my mum lived up here. Right, okay. Do you know what? So many guests we have that live here that are oh, always yeah. from that area. Yeah. Always. Yeah. Started off in that area, come down here. Mm. Yeah. So what did you think of Medway? What, when I come down here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I pref- I preferred I preferred it because I didn't know anyone. Okay. You know, yeah. So when I when I came down, why well, do you have a reputation up there already then? I, down there, I was just a, like a, a typical kid, man. Typical kid. Um, I had no no education. I left school really really young. How young were you? 
I never went to school from just as I turned 14. I never went back to school after that. Never went. Okay. Except for, couldn't read right. Even when I was there, I couldn't, it wasn't ever my strong point. Did I? And then leaving so young, I couldn't, um, even now, but someone gives me a form recently. I was in the gym when I come back from Saudi Arabia and I went to Kent Gloves. I saw a train. And they're doing a charity thing now. Mm. All the kids training. And they asked me to do an autograph. And I had to have my dad sign the thing because I can't get the gist of. Um, sort of it looks or... it looks terrible. Yeah. If I do it, it looks like I've got a broken hand. Right. So what, I've had, what, your own autograph? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So now right. I, I have to. I've had to practice doing something very subtle and all it is is just spelling my name. Mm. That's that's like, that's my thing now. Mm. But I had to have my dad, my dad said to me, listen, you're going to have to do it because at some point, and it's happened. Someone's going to Yeah, I had a kid you. from my boy's school yeah. see me yeah. when I come back and he's watching my fight on his phone Yeah, and he went, it's actually you. Aww. And he asked, gave me, I couldn't believe it. Give me a bit of paper. He said, can you sign that? I said, Jack, do you want me to sign that? I couldn't believe it. So I was like, Put Louis on it, and he chuffed to bits his kids. Oh, bless. Yeah. that must have made you feel yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, because these are these are kids. To me, I'm just a normal. Do you know what I mean? I don't really think anything mm. of it, but it's a, it was a big deal to him. Oh, bless. so I was chuffed a bit. Yeah, yeah. So right, so you're 32, roughly. Yeah, gonna be 32 soon. 32 yeah. soon, but you've had a kid for quite a while, now. But yeah, you started off quite young, didn't you? Yeah. I started off at 20, but you did a lot better than me, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, a few years. And so I actually think when I've seen interviews with you before, that you're, you're well grounded, mature geezer. And do you mm. think that's because you were a dad early? Or was you still a bit of a tear away when you was a dad? Or did that ground you? Do you see what I mean? No, I've done. Um... I've done like, bad things as I've, as I've got older, you know. I think that I think you're, I think you some people would, but they're born. You're born a, a way, and I feel that some some people have like a a, a streak in them, yeah. maybe. Yeah. And I think I've always had a bit of a um, bad boy streak. Wild <laughs> mindset, do you know. Mm. Okay. So I think that sort of not not now, nah, not so much because I'm very <laughs> focused. Now it's the like, the best I've ever been, you know. So. But um, they they do it because you. Well, I've done it so young. I was so used to it. So mm. some people they have kids later and they go, "Oh, I only wanted to do this. I wanted to stop doing this because the kids was around." But I've done it since I was a kid. Yeah. So mm. I doesn't. I don't, doesn't really. I understand, mate. I I never thought you know I I had kids when I was twenty and I still was a kid at twenty. Yeah. So to be your age was you know just unreal, really. And mm. I I do you know what thirty? I reckon I actually thought I was a. I'm not a kid anymore. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, no, you still are a kid. Yeah, yeah. Well, can you do one thing for me? Look. Look at you. Well, we only have you on here because you're pretty, yet you stick the mic thing straight in front of your mush. So bring it all the way down, and then turn, <laughs> it drives me nuts. <laughs> Over mics. Hang about. Bear with me. We're getting serious, and then I'm having... <laughs> look, I even set it up once for you. Look, that, like that, so people can actually see your face, all right? It's only like the 70th time. There we go. <laughs> So this all stays on, I by the way. You do a right hook, right? Yeah. Don't worry, you've got a decent one of them, I feel. <laughs> <clears throat> right, that's it. We're ready to go again. Right, sorry, sorry. Right, so you've got three. <laughs> am I right in saying you've got three kids in total now? Too. Yeah, okay. And, um, right, go on, mate. I was going to say, how did that impact, like, all your training and all the sort of the demands of, of doing what you do? How did that, having three little kids as well, how does that affect it? I don't know. It, it doesn't really. Okay. It, uh, some people, some I've heard some blokes say, "Oh, I just want to be be indoors," and they say, "But I don't really have that." Um, it might sound cold me saying it, but it's it's not like that. Like I'm a, I'm a good dad. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. but um, I don't know. I, I think the, when when I was growing up, the men did the men thing. Yeah. And that that was that. So I think that's that's how I hmm. view things. So I know my kids are very well looked at. They're very safe. They're very loved. So I see them and I speak to them every single day. Hmm. So if I'm training and I have to go away, I don't think, oh no, I've got to, yeah, like yeah. oh someone else looking after them because I know they're with a mum and hmm. I know that. So I, I I ring them up and they're oh dad I love you. So I don't really it doesn't have an impact. Hmm. I don't right. really so, think about hmm. it. 
you, like because you, you're quite close to your dad, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and was it was that a similar relationship back then with your dad? Would you well, when said, I was a kid? Yeah, yeah. Well, he's doing. The, he's a postman, wasn't he? He's a postman. Yeah. So, <laughs> I know, I'm a staff. I've done it. <laughs> so it's not like me. Like, it's not like me. I've done a bit of research for one. So he was a postman. So his hours were, you know, I imagine he was home when you got, when you when you went to school. When you got back, he was in money, being a postman. No, when I'd get up in the morning, it was my nan used to because my my mum's mum lived next door to my dad. Right. So okay. she would come in in the morning and have to get us up. Right. To school because he was already up because he was yeah. at work and then I'd come home and he would he'd be there. Right, but other than that, yeah, she'd she'd be up and she'd she'd come in and get us up to school and make sure that we was sent out properly. And Brilliant. You didn't, didn't fancy following your dad's footsteps and being a postman. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't really, f I didn't really think of it. I was very like my own mind. I was busy doing my own. F I didn't really think of it, even yeah. from from young. You know what I mean? I, mm. I had my own mind. I didn't really think what what he did or what they did for a living or. Do you know what I mean? I didn't mm. really look at following footsteps. Mm. Do you know what I mean? His, his dad, my granddad, they're like big Irish family, and they was all, all fighters. So, and was your dad a fighter? My dad boxed as an amateur. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it, it was my granddad that used to talk to me about prize fights. Yeah, and would tell me about the things you can achieve in box and things like that. When I was a kid, mm. yeah. But it wasn't my dad. Never. I used to show me it. It was always on my TV, but he never told me about what you can get out of it. Do you know what mm. I mean? I see, yeah. And did you get a lot of discipline from it when you started it? Well, when, when was the first mm. time you actually stepped in the ring then? Well, I went, How old were you? I used to do bits with my dad mm. when I was really small. And then I went to a, a gym in Welling called Dance and Boxing Gym. But I was... What, near Dance and Park? Yeah. All right, okay. But I just wasn't interested. Mm. I would go there and I would do a little bit of sparring and things, but I was... Puffing and smoking and how old was you? I was young, man, like just fresh out of primary school, right. and I I wasn't interested in. It was stopping me from. I was doing nothing. Having really. a laugh, mm. stopping. It was stopping me in my head from doing things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, no. It and it, yeah. it obviously it weren't, and um, I never went back there. And then I came up when I got slung out of the school down there. I came up here. Yeah. And the gym opened on Darnley Road. Yeah. And I thought. I was watching a clip of Mike Tyson and Jack Dempsey and they were bobbing and weaving, um, eating his bag. And I went down to the boxing gym and then I never left. I wow. stayed in there. Yeah. Wow. It was like just coincidental. Because mm. you knocked someone out on your first day there, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. but yeah, I, <laughs> And you were like 14, is that right? Yeah. And I was about as, as fat as a... I said it on the podcast. Yeah. I was about as fat as a coat hang. I had no meat on me. <laughs> I was so, I was tiny. And, uh, I yeah, was but always... look at Wilder. Look how skinny Wilder's legs are. There's not much of him, is there? I know. I, know I, was, he... I was about as big as his leg. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and, but I was always very strong. He was a little, little kid. Yeah. I could do, when I was really small, I could do pull-ups and things like really active child. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, when I went in, they just put a pair of bag gloves on us. Like, you're not supposed to, you know. You're not supposed to spar in the gloves you wear when you hit the bag. Right, Because okay. they're small, they're thin. Okay. And just put a pair of bag gloves on. Right. And this bloke just let us go at it. And this kid had had experience. He'd been in gym, like gym shows. Where same age. You around. Yeah, same age as me. Yeah. I was 53 kilos. He was 67 kilos. Right. But that's not too much if you know how to defend yourself. Whereas my thing was... I'd learned up the estate. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when it's none of this. Nah, mate. So I'm just gonna go I just it. yeah, just tore it in but I could always punch properly because my dad used to teach us. And I was swinging and swiping and he just hit me. I don't think he missed. And then when I went to the corner after the bell went, I remember thinking, I I see that finger, Jack Dempsey bobbing and weaving. So He's found these shots and none of it looked good. I was just rolling my head and then I come up with a left hook and it fucking landed. <laughs> and I thought, oh, it worked. Like, so I'm bobbing and weaving. I'm just chucking these shots over and, and then they're landing and he's getting annoyed. And as he come forward, I chuck the left and he, I poleaxed him. And I thought, fuck me, I'm in trouble. Do you remember it like it was yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I remember everything. I still see that's the fellow drove past me the other day. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And uh, I wonder if he remembers when he says. He remember. Yeah. He might not though. <laughs> I imagine he's not doing it now, is he? Is he still? Do you know? Do you know anything about him? I, I went to the same school as him, and all people used to say he had a big. It was being an horrible bully, and you right. know when someone's in the gym, they're very loud, mm. piping mm. up about things, saying things. That's all. The sort of what I remember of him, mm. and then when we, like I said, we sparred, um, and he he was he was giving me hiding the first round and half, mm. and then I, when I started landing because I was probably <laughs> underneath him, I thought I'm going to get him, and uh, he landed, yeah. and I looked at the coach and he went, pick him up then. <laughs> that was all he said to me. Didn't say is he okay. He just went pick him up, and I I was trying to get him up, but where he's like yeah. floppy, Out of it, yeah, he's like dead weight. No red guards or nothing. Yeah, we had that guard on. Yeah, but we had these little, these tiny yeah, little Yeah, the gloves do a bit more damage if they ain't got as much. Yeah, yeah. Just picked him up and um, I got out, of, got out of the ring and I thought, I don't know what I'm going to, I don't know yeah. what to do, I the bag or what. And they said, <laughs> everyone's going home now. So she went, basically went in there, let everyone spar and get to that gym. So no real direction then? Yeah, <laughs> Not on that. On, jump <laughs> yeah. In. yeah, on that day, but then there was an old man there called Sandy Risley. I don't know if you've heard of him. Nah, no. Very, very um, big amongst boxing yeah um he was there and he's where, like come here where have you boxed with us i've never boxed i sort of done it in the garden uh, wow. and that ain't bad what did you say 15, 15. yeah we'll have to check that one yeah. <laughs> that you, might that, you, might have, yeah. <laughs> you never know and it's, <clears throat> look, it's in two bits as well well done <laughs> um Go on. yeah he, and he convinced me to keep coming down the gym and he put me in touch with my manager years on right and um yeah, it was probably because of him that I stayed in the gym. So you're wow. still with the manager that you're still with, with Still with him, yeah. I wouldn't be with anyone else. Right, okay. So is the manager from this him. area or is it London based? No, or? Mark Rowe, his name is. He's, Mark Rowe. He's down. He's moved. Oh, he's moved I'm not going to pretend actually. I know any manager's names, but carry on. <laughs> he, uh, he's up oh, yeah, there. Oh, Mark Rowe, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, like this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's, he lives up here now. Right. But he, he's a lot, a lot of good men were with him. Right, okay. Serious man, yeah. Any anyone we would know, do you think? Like just a normal person that watches boxing every now and then know who he's managed before? Julius Francis? You know Julius Francis? I have heard of that name, yeah. Yeah. Um I name another fellow that everyone would probably know. He used to train him well, uh, Lee Murray. Lee Murray, yeah, I've heard of that to, name, yeah. He used to train him. Um, right. He's very well liked by very serious yeah. men because he's loyal, he's very loyal. Yeah. And in boxing people rip you off, whereas mm. He's not done anything but been the complete opposite to mm. everyone that I've ever heard of in boxing where they're scowling people and right. taking quite okay. as money. If I, there's been times I fought for free and he refuses me to pay him manager. He won't let me pay him. Because oh, wow. you fought for free? Yeah. If I, if yeah. He says to me, no, no, no. If, if you don't earn, I don't earn. Yeah. I love him to death. I, so I wouldn't be with anyone else. Mm. That's good. No one else That's good. Now tell me about promoters. Do you have to stick with one promoter? I don't know how it works. I'm not with a promoter. Not at all? No. Not at all. I, that's why I've been able to fight um, like around. Okay. So I've been able to go to Poland, Scotland without promoters saying, no, nah, I want it on my show or you can't fight on this oh, show because like, you're with like me. Almost like a contract. To yeah. Right. Right. So, so you, right, you okay. feel a bit freer, really. Yeah. Basically, I'm a free agent. Yeah. I'll, yeah. You ring my manager, make an agreement with him and then I'll, I'll fight with you. Okay. That's basically how it goes. Okay. So, so how many pro fights did you have? So let's just go back. Let's go back a bit. So someone took you under their wing at that once you started knocking people out, kids out, <laughs> didn't they? And they what they'd hone hone in your skills. Well, Is that right? Your dad's trained you now. He trained me as an amateur as well. Yeah. Right. So, so how did your dad find? He wasn't at that club, was no, he? No, I rang him. So just knocked someone out. And I said, <laughs> I just went to the boxing gym and took myself down the gym. I just knocked out one of their one of their boxers. He said, he's gone egg about <laughs> and he couldn't believe it he's going what are you talking about he's just jacking right. the old that must have felt good for you though like just walking out of there and that must have given you a little bit of I felt more oh. chuffed than the fact I could ring my dad oh. oh that's nice at them at them points we wasn't we'd never see like the way he used to argue all the time mm. right okay because obviously as I'm a, I'm a father now so he's trying to tell me what to, like, what's right for me yeah. and I just see it as um, criticism You've got to fall into line, otherwise. He, he took, took arranged college meetings, and he took me to one. He grilling me about um, he's in there saying, "Don't speak. Listen to what they're saying. It don't matter what right. they tell you. You're doing the calls." And as soon as he left, I just shaved straight off. I thought, <laughs> "No way. You ain't gonna sit me here now. No way." In my head, I was gonna do things my own way, but what I wanted to do would have led me up 
in a completely different light. Mm. Yeah. So when I went down to the boxing gym, he'd come up the next day and I went down there and he'd watch us train, watch us spar. And then the the club was filling up with kids mm. all the time. So he got his training license and able to right, train kids. Okay. So he started training me and other kids in there. And that's how it's it stayed. Oh, right. Oh, right. So he's still in there and he's still training. Not done it. Only me now. Only I, I left. I left that gym. We went mm. to another another amateur gym. Um, and then a term pro with him and now it's just me and him. Right. Training. Okay. That's nice. It's mm. nice it that nice. you have that bond yeah. with him and you can actually, because obviously you've almost come full circle now and it's mm. nice that you've got that relationship yeah, back yeah. with him as well. So it, The boxing's brought, brought it like mm. that. Otherwise, it, you'd just be... In arguments, mm. yeah, yeah. So you say a lot about you were laying slabs a lot through your amateur sort of career, wouldn't you? Yeah, I worked. Yeah. I had a food job as an when I was an amateur. Done done bits in his bed shop. I didn't say on that George because there was cut for time. So I. Uh, well, you haven't you got you're unlimited on this podcast, mate. <laughs> I was like loading mattresses and things in in the back of these lorries on the on the weekends, and then through the week I would I was doing a job once. So I had to strip these vans down. Like with an eat gun, and you pull all the things off, and your hands just shred it to pieces, and you're up oh. at three in the morning. What are you, th- what are you yeah. taking off on on these vans? Like, like when they put in lo- logo advertisements. That's like. what I thought oh, you were going right, to say. Yeah. So you're taking away the vinyl from the uh, yeah. wrapping, the wrapping. Rap, of, when they yeah. wrap the vans, yeah. we're stripping that. We Mate, like I've done that. Guns. Taking that off is a bastard to get off. <laughs> what <It's> a bastard <laughs> no, to get off? So we give like little eat gun. Yeah, yeah. And you're stripping and then, it, oh, and your right. hands are blistered to fucking yeah, yeah. So so I did that for a little while. So then you had to do that and then go and box as well. That must be. Really wrap your hands. Your hands are sore as when you come out of there. It's mostly when you're wrapping them. When you mm. wrap your hands up, you're thinking, fucking, you've got no skin on the front. Because you're giving no gloves. We was just kids. So these fellas are running a mint out of us. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they're just sticking us on these vans. We're stripping it. A couple of the boys, obviously, they went, oh, fuck this. I ain't doing this. <laughs> yeah, and they I went home. Them. But I, I stuck it out because I wanted the money. Mm. Right. Yeah, well, you had kids, didn't you? Am I right? Not, not, a, not they, they, they come just after. Just mm, after right. that. When I started... On the, the metal yard. Yeah. Mm. I just like had kids in. Okay. And what were you doing? Security on the metal yard when you? No, out? the metal yard, I was fixing the, the metal. These big, you know, the piling sheets that they put in the ground? Yes. Mm. Then when they come back, they were f- fucked. And this firm, rather than, whatever, they wanted us to straighten them out. So I'd have a fellow with his heat gun and I'd have a f- big 14 pound hammer. <laughs> no, yeah, so like, this is a torch. This yeah, it's like a torch. <laughs> yeah. And I would stand there with the hammer and just straighten these and they, they're going like um, like like a, a certain shape. Yeah, you know so what, what, I mean? what thickness were they? Like that? No, some they were like, what the biggest, they were eight mil but they yeah. were long and you'd have to go from one end up the other and you'd have Straight to go through hundreds of them. You all, it kept me kept me strong yeah. and fit, mm. you know what I mean, doing it. Because you used to have to, in theory, okay. you meant to wait for the uh, truck driver to lift them over. That's you? it. But it, you were it, doing it. come in and, and flip them. Yeah, but if he wasn't now, I would get a bit of wood in there, oh wedge it up, God. and then I would twist, like flip it on its side, yeah. and I'll do the one underneath. Yeah. Oh, my God. Jesus, so you've done a bit. <laughs> so it was all sort of every-handed stuff, really, that you were doing. I couldn't do anything intellectual. I could barely read. So everything was was heavy. Then from mm. there, like when they do the, the piling, where they they drill the big holes in the, the piling uh, yeah. rigs, they fill them up with concrete. Did Wembley car park, yeah, I fucking hated that. Did Wembley car park? Do you say? Yeah. All oh, right. I can't okay. stand doing that job either. Man. Yeah. Fucking horrible. <laughs> but every, yeah, but if you want to be doing something else and you're just doing that to earn the money, then you won't be able to stand mm. anything like that. It's good money, but it, I used to have to get up from here, drive to Welling, and get free trains to London. No. Oh. Get to the site, do the the work, and the work there was fucking hard graft. Yeah, and then I'd have to do that all the way back. Mm. Yeah, and I was doing it every day, and, and it's then, a whole day, isn't it? By the time oh, you got, I, I nearly missed my son's, my second son's first birthday, and on that day, I went to the guys. I oh, fuck this, you poke it. Mm. I ain't doing it because if I hadn't left when I did, I would have missed his little birthday. Yeah. So I just went straight home. I thought, fuck this, I ain't worth it. Mm. And mm. then the way I got a, the metal yard actually rang me. And took me back and sponsored me and gave me days off to train. So it was, so it was all right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. That's but all, all that work must have kept you fit still, though. You, As you were lifting and doing all that, it, it was a little bit like a workout for you as yeah, well? Yeah, the, the, the swing in the hammer was... Um, mm. It's like Rocky kept, getting ready in Russia, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what they said to me, yeah. It's just lifting it all day, dragging yeah. things around all the time. And, and the hours got actually got shorter when I got there. I was on six till two, which was... Brilliant. 
Um, but yeah, it kept me very fit doing doing all of that during the day. I think our our label graph mm. work keeps a man's body fit and strong. Yeah, mm. definitely. Mm. So yeah. it did keep me really strong. Mm. And like your body's hardened because you're out in all weather conditions. Mm. Right. So you got a, what's your amateur record? Do you know it? I had uh, twenty six fights, um, twenty one wins. I had eighteen fellas hit the deck, but twelve of them are knocked are knocked out. Right, okay, so yeah, I yeah. think f- I think I lost five or six five, as an amateur. Wow. What, early what, on, were they those losses? No, I actually went. I think I went eight fights unbeaten with. I had loads of knockouts, and then I lost in the semi-finals of the novices to Hara Davis uh, on points, and then I racked up some more knockouts after that in competitions as well mm. when the when the competition was fit so like you've all yeah. got good records of things and yeah. i was able to land and, and knock people out and, yeah and then it wasn't until the end that i was getting ready to go pro that the, when the competition was getting higher i was still putting them over but they were like filling the way through the because you've only got three twos or four two minutes Yes, of course. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but, what sort of? Uh, so, you say you've got twenty six under your belt. What sort of span was that? Was that over months, years? How how yeah, long did that take you? For? I actually had a couple of years. I might be in a year out of the gym again, but it, it didn't do me no fucking favour. Is that where you had a bit of trouble? Because you, yeah, me- you mentioned that. A bit. Yeah, I ended up fucking getting nicked, and I was in a lot. But I won't. Do you want to talk about that or not? Not not too much. Um, Something happened outside the gym. Is that right? Uh, uh, no, there was. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, so, well, I'm sure what, that's what I thought street. I heard. <laughs> no, probably gonna, a, there's a I, few. Was watching, I was watching your <laughs> podcast. I was in the bath at the time, so I may have dunked my head under the water. <laughs> yeah, no. But I thought you, you were you were sort of saying you were saying. Now I can't remember if it was why you may have already been pro by this time, but then you said there was some sort of altercation. Something happened that set you back a bit, and I think it was where you said you nearly got nicked. But I thought you said something happened outside the gym. But I might have that completely wrong. Like something happened that set you back a bit. That no, that was when I ended up I ended up in my I was fucking living at my mower. That right. was when I was a pro. But when I was I was at the gym for a, a year as an amateur, um I was more inclined to slowly start drifting because my dad stayed in that gym. I was more inclined to start drifting down um seeing powers that I hadn't seen for a little while. Right. Um, dodgy ones and things like that and then uh, yeah I ended up doing something and it went bad st- yeah it weren't, mm. weren't, didn't go well right. not for me anyway <laughs> and I ended up getting fucking arrested right again and it just was and then I was sort of I went down to the gym and the old fella said to me like what do you want to do you're going to go down that route and be a, be a div or and then he like knuckled me down. And then I went yeah. out and won my first championship and I thought, fucking this is it, I'm gonna do this. Right, okay. So that, that kept me in there. So how much trouble if you don't if you don't want to say obviously don't fucking say, but how much trouble have you been in before? <laughs> have you been nicked before and like put away for a bit or anything like no, that? No, I never went I never went to prison. Had the old tag on the a- ankle before? No, I've been no, I've been very, very l- like luck like, lucky. Just snap it off anyway, wouldn't you? <laughs> Stick it on the my legs. So stick it on the scrapyard dog. Put it on the dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I've been um been very lucky. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, been very lucky. Right. So, Good. when was your first? When you had your first competition, you thought, right, okay, this is it. How did it feel to step in the ring first time? Thinking. Yeah, I've, meaningful I've got, fight. Oh, yeah. Do you my, remember? It? Yeah, my first amateur fight because. The woman, I've still got it. The the boys, the boy's auntie, was called Jack Desmond, and he brought a loads of people down from Essex. Was it local? It was in Sheerness. Oh, oh yeah. Right. yeah, I think it was in Sheerness. Lays down, I think it right, was. Right, okay. And, um, <laughs> whatever. I don't know if they're the same place or not. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, but, yeah, oh, they yeah, are. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. Lays down is on the is a, ca- a part of a, a one bit of coast. It's of definitely Sheerness. on the, on yeah. the island. Yeah. 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 And yeah. To be fair, I should know because. The, the hole it was in, the second boxing gym I went to, when I walked in there, I had to go in that hole and go upstairs. And I thought, Fuck, my first part was in it. Yeah. Mm. Eastern ABC. But they come over from Pitsy, is it Pitsy, Essex? Oh, right. Okay. Well, I've yeah. never heard of Pitsy. But but there you're... was loads of them in there. Yeah. And uh, when I got in the ring, his auntie went to me, 
I just think in the last 20 seconds, look at the poor little fucker's legs. And my legs are about that fat. Like, oh. Even now I've got skinny <laughs> legs. And I was just standing there like thinking, I can know they're mugging me off well bad. Like, and and did was... you have support? That, that must have egged you on a bit, didn't it? Did I have support? Yeah, like on your first match. Only the people from my club. So not the, as many Some of the boys that was... No, I didn't. I didn't take a like a whole crowd. Of entourage? Yeah. No, no, I didn't. Not that. like the entourage you got now waiting outside of this podcast. No, no. <laughs> it's just uh, my dad was there. Oh, Amber it. <laughs> um, my brother weren't there. Just my dad and a few boys from the gym who who was also fine. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. So, have you got one brother? Is that it? One brother. One brother, and that's no sisters or anything no, like. No, that? no. Right, okay. Just, just and is he, is he into boxing as well? I'm now I'm drifting off a bit, but is he? No, he likes. Smoking and drinking. He's oh, right. very, so very he, relaxed, man. So he, um, he chose the other path, did he? Oh, he's lazy. <laughs> no, he's, um, he's a good kid, my brother. Very, very uh, knowledgeable, very intelligent, really clever. Um, but just really... Just go, for a, go for a run. Fuck that. <laughs> right. Watch TV. <laughs> What's play. he do for a living? He's a dog handler. Oh, right. Dog wicked. Dog security dogs and, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That's cool. He's been good at it. Right, sorry. We're going back going now. Back. Yeah, so... So, so this you've guy... done this kid, did you? Did you say anything to the aunt afterwards? No, I, I I actually knocked him out in the first round, and um, I went over to his mum just to like so, like, and she gave me a big hug, bless her. But oh. the, the auntie was looking at me, and she looked fuming. So, <laughs> so when I come away, and still now, when you press play, if you turn it right up, you can hear her say, "Oh, look at his poor little legs." Oh. <laughs> you know I mean? so you got a recording of it. Yeah, my yeah, they were videoing it. So oh, wow. wicked. Yeah. So how, were, how, how old were you at this point? 31. No, <laughs> just, just had, uh, I think I just turned 15. Or oh, four, wow. I think I was 14. One of the same. Like, yeah. That takes some guts to actually get in a ring and have all these people from Essex sort of mm. jib at you and you know, have a go at you and then you're just like, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, I didn't really... <laughs> but her saying that probably egged you on to... I've been kind of skid now. I don't know. To be fair, I didn't really think anything of it. Only, it's like only now... Do, 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 I, do I look back and laugh? At the time, I didn't really think anything of it. So mm. what's going through your mind, like, even at that age? What you've been told? What you've been trained? Um, or does that just come second nature to you when you're I in think, I think some people come... Like, I see some kids in the changing room and they're, they're a lot... I know what I said um, on the other podcast that I get... The, the fight for me is quite a relieving mm. because I'm, I've been pent up for... Weeks and weeks on end. Mm. Yeah, it's time to vent. Yeah. yeah, and I take myself away from, like you said earlier, kids. I stay away from everyone and I, I don't socialise or, or nothing. And I fucking drive myself mad. I actually don't like doing it, but I find it works. Mm. Right, so uh, when do you decide? How long before the fight are you away from everyone? Uh, a, good few, a good few weeks. Probably the last three weeks, four right. weeks. Mm. Um, I actually started doing it for this one, but they keep postponing the date. Yeah. So, so you can't wait. So you, this Sorry, is a British still... Commonwealth title, isn't it? Yeah. So I've I've just kept it up. I I, I I see the kids, but I make sure that I'm. The gym is too important at the minute because mm. I could potentially give them something that I've no one ever thought. Do you know what I mean? So I'm just going to stick doing it mm. without. It, not not that they're in, like distracting me or nothing, but I just want to keep my mind in completely that on that. Yeah. 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 So I I stay. It's one of those businesses where you've got to be like that, mate. And that yeah. It is. Yeah. You know, I see Marvin Agler used to do it. Because people can get hurt. You know what I mean? People do get hurt. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, the more into it you are mentally, then surely that's the best bet, yeah. for you. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, definitely. And you reckon you, you were like that from an early age? So even when you were doing your amateurs, did you, was you, well, you were out of it from ev everyone? I know you obviously didn't have kids then. Well, you probably did, actually, towards it. Towards the end, I did, yeah. yeah. Um yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go out anywhere, or I, I, because I, I enjoyed it. I, like, I, I loved it. Mm. I still do. Like, I love every every minute of it. I love every every feeling that comes with it. I like the um, like I'm addicted to the like, that, that adrenaline. Rush, yeah. yeah, it's and it's it's very different. It's not boring. It's not basic. Everything is exciting because mm. you're gonna get in there in front of all them people screaming and and a, some are screaming abuse and whatever. But you're just like, if you're so alive. Do you block it's electric. it out? Do you block it out sometimes? Do you just sort of... Or do you take it in? Do you use it as a lot like, When I went to Poland, I couldn't block it out because the, I was on the way to the ring and the, the bloke got in my... <laughs> and he went, I'm going to kill you. And we started arguing with each other. So they got me in the ring and then we're arguing 
over mm. the, the ropes at each other. And was he Polish? Excuse yeah. Me. Right. Yeah, and my dad went, Lou, like, focus on him, not mm. not the crowd, because you're fighting him. Oh, right. Okay. You're in the middle of this arena. At, I think it was 5,000. I didn't know that it was going to be that big until I got there. And I thought, fucking hell, we're fighting in here. Mm. It was brilliant. And then when I, I stopped him, I screamed abuse at the fellas there that said they were going to fucking kill me and that. And then they followed me to the changing room. <gasps> but I didn't, I didn't know because yeah. I was bending down doing something. And then I heard one of them say something. And when I looked up, I thought, okay, I'm on my own and all. Just have a scrap. No, you can't. I mean, I've thought it was going to go because the security fell and moved let him in Fuck. and he oh come up to me and, he, and then he shook my hand oh and I went, <laughs> yeah my heart was like <laughs> oh, yeah. going to the dozen. and then I got back to the hotel and I actually had a drink with him oh blimey yeah it so it's just right. more of an intimidation thing before the fight then yeah because there was one one fella small and he's right I don't know what he'd done I don't know if he had an accident or he was a bad fella but I was in the lift with him and they would, I was watching them in the mirror. They're, they're like trying to intimidate me. And when I got out, one of them dropped something. And as he went to pick it up, I pressed the button. I sent them back up. <laughs> and then when I, when I got back after the fire, he came up to me and was laughing. And he bought me a brandy. And I right. sat there and had a drink with him. And he's laughing and joking with me about it. Right. Stuck, like in Polish, someone there was a... Uh, Translating. Yeah, could, could talk really well. Mm. And he said... The, uh, when they was in the lift you sent them back up and I said yeah because they were fucking winding me up and so I pressed the button and sent them back up <laughs> at least I had a sense of humour then yeah they were but, good as gold the Eastern there. European Polish geezers look hard anyway don't they do you know what I mean they always they look a bit handy even if they're not don't they do you know the what I mean the second time I went there uh, some one bloke on the outs when I was walking in he had one eye and I, <laughs> I looked and he was fucking massive and my mate when we got over there I said look these are they're big men, like they're, they're strong and they don't fuck. With it. And he was no. going, Oh, is it bad? And when we got there, he went, He's got one eye. <laughs> <laughs> so man, he had one eye with a fucking dent in his head and he looked an ogre. Oh, and I God. thought, Fucking, I hope he ain't in his corner. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because he was, he looked serious, that bloke, man. And you was, fu- sorry, you were fighting a Polish man. That, that was night. the second time I went right. back. Yeah, I okay. fought another Polish fella as well. Right. Yeah. So now, now, how does all the flights get sorted out? Do you have to sort them out yourself? Do you promote no, they. Out? Because they, they phoned me. Yeah, and, they sorted it all out for you. They, yeah, they, they put it all up for you because yeah. you're going over there to fight there. Yeah. So you're, you're supposed to lose. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, because you, no, you get a lot of journeymen, didn't you? Yeah. And maybe they just thought you were that, but you've got other ideas about that, mate, and you? you just want to yeah, go I'm for it, didn't you? Yeah, I'm definitely not going to lose, no. Ah, good, hmm. good. So, so challenges then, have you ever, up until this point, have you faced any challenges that you thought I would handle that differently or... Anything that you think, oh God, I really, that was hard to come over with what, in, with, in the boxing side of it. Oh, in the boxing side yeah. of things, like, like if you were in the ring or come up against someone or training schedules or anything. Oh, like yeah, that, that, a, no, I mean, I, for the first time, I'm able to train every day without going to work. Mm. Like, I'm not going to work at, at the minute because I put the, the money I, I earned from um, Sky. And the Saturday fight, I thought, leading up to the Saturday fight, I thought, do you know what, I ain't going to work. And when I, in the morning, I went to my pal, look, I ain't, I ain't coming back, mate. Fuck mm. that. I'm going to do it properly. Can I ask what you were doing before, before all the yeah, sky yeah. stuff? Um, digging holes on the water, mate. Right. Okay. Doing that. That, again, was fucking, yeah. kept me fit. That's what I was basically using after Trendy. to keep me fit. Yeah, <laughs> because you're digging holes when you're on the jackham all day. So this, we ain't it's talking long ago, are we? We're talking six months ago, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, I was right. doing that. and then. I got the Saudi fight and I ain't been back to work since. And how did they treat you over there? Yeah, brilliant. It was yeah. Brilliant because, the, yeah, because the, only because of my second name. My second name's green. Their flag is the, a green colour. Oh. And I didn't, I didn't, all the kids was waving the flag at me when I knocked him out. And I'm thinking, I don't know what they mean. And my mate's fluent in Arabic. Right. And he said, they're shouting your name, Luke. Green, and they're shouting. And I went, oh, so I jumped over the thing. I went up and had a photo with the kids. Oh, oh brilliant. Yeah, they, they love you for that. <laughs> they're having back. Yeah. 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 Oh, wow. Well, every time I see it on the TV, the boxers and, you know, promoters and everything seem to love it there. Really, you know, they it's look the best treated like kings been. there. We had a villa. Yeah. And then outside of the villa is the gym and the restaurant. Right. You get a gym slot as well. Okay. And if they say... You've got to be somewhere at six, at quarter to five, your driver's at the door. Right. 
waiting for punch off sort of thing. Right there, yeah, it was. It was I'm, I'm actually still talking to my driver from the side of you. That's good. Still talking to him. Yeah, yeah. He's a really that's nice. nice. Fella. That's mm. nice. Um, so you get a gym slot. So how long do you get in that gym usually when you're when it's fight sort of time? The week of the, it was the week of the week of the fight. So we're only in there an hour. Just, is that what you would do normally, even if you was it? No, it at I agree. Home? Do two to sometimes two and a half hours. Right. Um, over here, but over there it was just like stretching, shallow boxing, a bit of pad work, yeah. light bag work. Right. You, you're just tapering the weight down. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You've you've gone up a weight class. You've been up a weight class, haven't you? I've gone up a weight. Yeah. So what are you at now? Sorry, kilos. What is it in kilos? I fight at sixty nine point nine. You weighed out the day before the fight. Yeah, sixty nine. Mm. And do you have trouble cutting for that for the weighing? Is it draining for you? No, or not, do you, Is it easy for you because you've gone up a weight? No, the, the last weight cut I've done before at welterweight. Mm. Which is what made me go up the weight. Fucking my body was yeah was dying, and even trying to put the weight on overnight, my body just wouldn't allow it. Wouldn't allow me to eat, and it, when I was drinking, it was hurting. When I was right. drinking, I was thinking, "Fucking hell, like a minute now." Mm. Yeah. So I moved up a weight. You know, again, I was knocking people straight out again. So I thought, "Yeah, I'm gonna stay here." Mm. Yeah. So you think that's your ideal weight? Yeah, I feel feel ten times better. Yeah. So Good. the training before a big match is it sort of literally the day before no training just in case you get hurt or you pull mm. something or anything you can't like that train. Or is... the day before the fight you don't train at all you're you just you do the weighing then you're just eating and drinking mm. just putting everything back in your body ready for the the next day so you mm. wake up and just lounge about some boys have to get up and do a workout to make the weight because mm. they're still too heavy you know what i mean mm. but luckily i've diet nicely Mm. And for the first time, I got a nutrition fellow who's help, right, helping yeah. me. So Not that's about, that's yeah. paid massive. Really, yeah, worth yeah. its weight in gold. Is it? Yeah, because I've never never knew anything about it. What about um, like mentally? Do you have anyone with, with that? Like, what, like mental coaching? Mental like, coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah I see like a lot of a lot of boys go over that, and I think um, I don't know if I believe it really. Yeah, but right, look at it this way, right. How do you feel if you've got like Primark stuff on compared to, you know, if you're wearing something in Primark, you've got Primark gear on mm. and then you've got half decent gear on. Mm. Do you feel any different in the head when you're wearing something than you're out of town or something like that? Do you know what I mean? I, I, get, I get what you mean, but the... Because I reckon, right, and I'm probably full of shit here, right, no, but I'm going to say it. Yeah. Football <laughs> teams, right? I reckon a football team should be putting the best looking kit, the top make, because well, you come I, I, out, of yeah, that, you come out on that pitch, confidence. fill in the bollocks, yeah, yeah. yeah. fill in the bollocks. Uh, then you, rather than one of the teams that gets the cheap old makes that they all get, do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get you. And then you just you feel apart, and that's another ten percent confidence. I, mm -hmm. I feel at yeah. least. So you know, I feel the same happens like with a mental coach. They can put these positive positive things in you, which will really help. And I've I've had some coaching like that. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't fight or anything, but. It just makes you think of stuff in a different way. And I, I really do think it's a benefit. I so I've don't. heard of boys... Um... Remember back in the day, sorry, I'm jumping in again. I think someone like Sven Goran Eriksson brought in a coach of some... And I forgot what he was called, but he was basically like a okay. mindset, mindset coach. coach yeah. And everyone took the piss. Everyone's like, what the fuck have we got this mindset coach in the England team for? Because right. that was just our mentality. But I think now... I've, I can see the value in it because okay. I've sort of experienced it before. So, right. but you might already have it. There might you might have a mindset coach come and speak to you, and he's like, like an L. He knows what he wants. He's he's mm. in the right place. Do you see what I mean? You've yeah, probably got yeah, no yeah. doubts. Now, jumping on to like someone like Joshua, right? When I first started watching Joshua, right, him against Klitschko, probably one of the first fights. I I was saying to Amber earlier, I jumped out of my seat. Mm. He got knocked down, and then he came back, didn't he? Yeah. But. You know, I wouldn't say directly after that uh, when he stuck when he lost to um, Andy. Uh, yeah, he's gone in. He was gone in the head from for loads of fights yeah, after that. Wasn't right on that. There point. was something right, wasn't right with him, and I don't just mean that that fight with Andy. I mean a few after that as well. Mm -hmm. He was timid, fighting timid, and, and f physically he hadn't changed. No, no they no. kept messing about with his weight. He kept getting bulking up, yeah. and then he'd be lower, wouldn't he? Yeah. And something happened to him mentally. You know, and I'm sure he's got a, 
a coach like that that would have dealt with things. Like a hypnosis sort of. Oh, like yeah, not, it's, yeah, it's kind of like a hypnosis, but it's just putting him on the right frame of mind. But like even when he had interviews, he was so cryptic with his interviews. Mm. He was sort of contradicting himself to the point where I yeah. was getting annoyed with listening to him. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I was actually getting annoyed with listening to him. I'm like, what are you doing, mate? Just, just get back in the, in the gym and train, and train mm. how you used to train. And something's clicked recently because he, his last two fights were brilliant. It was the old Joshua again. I'm so happy for him because the old Joshua. Yeah. But, you know, like I say, his dip for me wasn't physically. It no, was mentally. Mental mm, mm. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, it's a mental decline. And so that's why, that's why I feel mental is, is obviously you've got to be in the right place. In this sport, you have to be mentally very prepared. So yeah. when you get someone defeat you, how do you feel about that? It must be soul crushing. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, I, I've, I've said this a few times. I see boys, they come away mm. and they're like, I'm going to get a new coach mm. and I'm going to go and do this and I'm, this was wrong or whatever. Well, the, the very first thing that I normally do is I look straight in the fucking mirror mm. and I think, if my coach is telling me to do something and I don't do it, that's my fault. That's yeah. not his fault yeah. or her fault. Or that. And if you've got distractions going on around you, that's still your fault mm. because you've got a choice every day not to go and do this, not to go and do mm. that, not to listen to them, not to do this. So that's your fault. Mm. Yeah. And nowadays, the whole error that's going, not just in boxing, just in life, Change everyone's coaches. a fucking victim yeah. Yeah. and everyone wants to point out everyone's got something wrong with them or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I think it's such a crock of shit, mate. Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in any of it. I think it's all a money maker. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's lying about things. I think if you go in a class of kids now and there's 30 of them, 28 of them have got some sort of ADHD problem yep, yep. and it's all bollocks. Mm -hmm. It's all shit. Mm -hmm. It's all a lie. I had a meeting about my boy the other day and they went to me about, um, do you want him to look? And I went, no. I was 10 times worse than this kid. I still do not go to sleep now. Mm. Sometimes I'm awake all the time. My energy through. But there's nothing wrong with me. I'm fit and healthy. Just mm. need to find their path. Yeah. Yeah. And I, these kids, there's nothing wrong with these kids. But I blame the parents for also ramming things down their fucking mm. neck, tablets and why, whatever. Why do they need a diagnosis I when they're just know. normal kids? Why at the end of the day? I don't believe in it. But then you've got adults going, oh, I've got the same problem. <laughs> don't believe in any of it. I think the first thing you should do is just take accountability for some of the things you're doing, mate. Mm. Mm. That's what I do when I've lost. I take full accountability. And every time I've lost, I pride myself on it. I've always come back stronger every time. I've come back. Every time I've lost, I've come back and I've, I've gone against unbeaten boys away from home. And that's a, a mental test because you think, right, I've just lost. We're now going to go over in there garden now so i'm yeah. against the crowd the ref the fucking judges have shown what they're like recently <laughs> luckily i can knock people out yeah so yeah. you you get in there and, and you have to pull it off yeah and every time i've made sure i'm in the best shape i possibly can be and, it, and mm. it, the risks work mm. taking the risks have been very rewarding for me because mm. i'm willing to do it so like you've been through about four rounds right you've had a bit of a beating around the head you mm. sit in that corner and they're giving you advice Surely sometimes you just can't take that in because you're physically and mentally exhausted. Because no. obviously we're all sitting at home. I'm having a coffee. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck all wrong with me. I'm like, what? It doesn't, why is he not listening to the corner? Why is he not listening to the corner? They're telling him what to do. <laughs> but I haven't been whacked around the head about 10 times. You know what I mean? In, in three minutes. Do you I see love, what I mean? I love to see Do you try. find it hard? Is it your dad that's the one that's giving you the... Um, or you got a, who's talking to you in between rounds? Your dad? Or... Normally, yeah, my dad or, or Mark. Um, only there's one one of them when I, I was I was all I was doing was looking for one shot, and he's just picking me off all night. Chum, 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 chum. And they're saying to me, "Listen, you ain't fucking working. Wild. You, you don't wild out because he's just looking for one shot. Yeah, why aren't you working? I've got a, yeah. I've got a real good engine. Do you know, so why, why aren't you putting the graft in? You, mm. You're gonna slip the rounds away. So they they bollock me for that, but the uh, I fought Freddie Kewitt and it got to, and it was a real brutal fight and it got to round six and I sat down and I said, what round is it? And my dad went to me, don't fucking worry about that. <laughs> and I'm <there> thinking, <laughs> yeah, but how long have I got yeah. left, man? <laughs> yeah. Fucking hell, because we were both in bits. Like, both of us, <laughs> eyes, my eyes was closed, he was cut, oh, we was in bits. And he said, you're going to go out there 
and do something different. You've got to jump on the jab. And I thought, but I'm not a boxer. I'm like a rough on your... Mm. You, you do in. you do remind me of Tyson. Straight the way, out. The way, straight in, mm. straight in, yeah. But I outboxed this fellow on the back foot. I yeah. drew him in because he, he then started standing now because yeah. he's tight. And I jumped on the jab and I out jabbed him for the next three rounds. Wow. But then when I got back to the corner round after the, that round when I, so, I boxed him. So nine, something like that, yeah. I said to my old man, I sat down and he went, we need one more round of that. So get up. And he just rammed the gummy shoot in my mouth. <laughs> he went, you ain't tired. He fucking stood me up. And I was thinking, come bollocks, man. <laughs> Uh, but I went out win there. It. I won the fight. Yeah, I won wow. my first title as a pro. That's I wave, I wave so what did you win on points? Won over 10 rounds. I'd never, I'd only been six rounds once. And then I got a call. I watched him knock this fella out cold on a Sunday up at your call. And they phoned me the next day to fight him. Wow. And I thought, yeah, I reckon I'll beat him. Wow. But it didn't, I nearly done him in the first. But the belt, it was like 30 seconds left. And I didn't expect to catch him with it. Mm. As he come forward, I went, right hand and he fucking flagged I wow. got him and as I went to jump on him he grabbed me we got to the bell and then after that it was nine rounds of just right. fucking madness yeah wow. it was yeah uh, oh my god so yeah. you touched a little bit there about injury and stuff like that how mm. do you deal with pain how have you ever injured yourself severely yeah. or I, I don't know if you can see that lump on the back of my hand I oh. broke my metacarpal bone in the first round of um a fire football called Joe Hayes, and I threw an uppercut, and it didn't actually hit him flush. It skimmed him, and I thought, God, it felt like it felt like that knuckle had been pushed back. But the thing is, right, that's that's behind wrapping, behind a padded glove. Yeah. So the power you padding. must have used. <laughs> it's only they're only eight ounce them gloves. Right. I've actually got a, next time I will see, I bring it. I'll show you. You put your hand in it. We when sign that. <laughs> I'll bring them in. Oh, bless you. You can clench your hands like that. You can see your hands in them. The oh, eight ounce Really? Gloves. See, I've never, I don't think I've ever put on boxing gloves. Mm. Only as a kid messing around. So I wouldn't know the weights or anything. In the eight ounce. Oh, so they are a lot thinner than you think. Yeah, the eight ounce is a fucking tiny. Right. And I hit him on the top of the, well, I didn't, it, it skimmed him. I can show you the, the, the part, every time I watch it, I go, that was that fucking shot. And it felt like my knuckle had been pushed back. back. Yeah. And you, I'm like moving my hand in a glove thinking, fuck. But everything I was doing was really working. Yeah. Mm. So I didn't say, I got to the corner. I didn't tell them. Right. I just didn't say. Like they wouldn't have stopped you, would you? Would they no, but I didn't want them to adjust my, yeah. what I was doing. Mm. Does, right, now, I always have to go to Rocky because it's all I know, mate. <laughs> when he fought that um, geezer in like Rocky Balboa, he broke his hand, that geezer, and they said, if Rocky's got a few rounds before that starts wearing off. Right. Did it wear off for you? The pain, well, the pain in the hand, the pain in the hand. Did it wear off eventually towards the end of the fight or was there just so much going no, on? I actually about knocked him out the next round. Oh, right. You got with it. the same hand. But, oh, my God. But it, I, what it felt like is, how can I put it? You ever, you know when your hand goes numb and you sit on your hand for too long oh, and you yeah. wake up, Yes, right? yes. And it gets and it, like that. Pins and needles. It feels big, doesn't it? Right. Fluffy, doesn't it? Every time yeah. I, I threw it, it felt like someone was pushing their like, finger like in like that. So it it wasn't pain. It was just Pressure. Like really uncomfortable, mm. like extremely uncomfortable. So when I'm moving around, every time I'm hitting him, when I step off, you see my right hand, I'm stretching <laughs> my hand out, thinking, I can't say it wrong. But again, I didn't want to say anything because mm. I didn't want him to say, right, do this, do that, because I thought it's, what I'm doing is working. Yeah. But if it goes past another two rounds, then I'll say, look, I'll fucking front now. Right. But I left it and it, it worked. Have you ever <laughs> knocked anyone out with the left? Yeah, yeah. Um, most people, Sam Gilly said to me, I didn't know your left hook was like that. That's right, yeah. And that, I like that and all. You you get back after the match and have a good chat about the fight together. Drink, drink. Yeah. When I was in drink. Poland, I got, I got videos of it. We got back to the hotel the second time and the table full of whiskey and we got fucking smashed. Like, a lot of <laughs> all this, me and all the, all the Polish boys was so pissed. Had a real good drink with each other, yeah. Good laugh. Nice. Good. And you talk about the fight and all that, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, I was drinking with his brothers because his brothers did the, the no glove fighting in Poland. Yeah. And we was all sitting there, we was drinking and chatting and laughing and fucking yeah. about it. Like, and then and my dad videoed it all. He's yeah. laughing at us, yeah. Because I had to get back up. When I went to bed, I only had an hour in bed. Oh, and I'd get on the plane and I was so drunk <laughs> getting on the plane. That they found me in the women's toilet. I was like, <laughs> being, being sick and that. Yeah, I was in a bad way. So, have you been knocked out before? 
Like completely Sparko? No, never. never. No, I've been knocked down. Mm. I've been knocked down, but I've you, never been. You've lost on points, and yeah, when you've lost, I got stopped. I got stopped. I got oh, stopped. Right. Um, Lewis Crocker, he's unbeaten eighteen. V- really good fighter, and um, my my game plan was for, I'm going to drag him late, and then I'm going to start really putting the, the power punches and the, and the pressure on, mm. and I let him get a rhythm. Go. He dropped me in the first round, and then I, as it was picking up. My dad was saying to me, you've let him get a rhythm gang. You can't get your fucking shots off. You, you're not mm. working hard enough. Like when you get in, yeah. you're not teeing off on him. Yeah. You're letting him get away. And he hit me. I had my arms up like that, blocking these shots. Yeah. And I, I mean, I had a eye. And he dummied the shot and he hit me right up the, the fucking gut. Right. I took a knee. Oh. I thought, no, I'm sweet. I keep going. Did you take the full count just to recover? I, I took, took the eight count. I got straight up. We carried on fighting. And then he swung a shot. And as I stepped out, my back leg, it was my, not my front leg. I remember thinking, what happened there? My back leg give out, right. not the front leg. Yeah. Um, and I got up, I was going, I'm, I'm sweet. But the rest, and then the rest stopped it. But it wasn't going to, that was how the fight was going to go. Because right. I'd let him get a rhythm going. Yeah. He, and he's known for being a, a very big, big puncher. Right. And I'd left my, my punches too late. Right. You know what I mean? It wasn't going to go that way now. He's just got two knockdowns that round. That was in round nine, I think, or round eight. He dropped me in the first. And although I was on him all the time, I just weren't winging enough. I was trying to make him miss. I let him get a rhythm. Mm. So it was my own fault. Right. No. Okay. Because they're you screaming at me. You mentioned Sam Gillen. He's, he's the guy that you're fighting in this um, rematch. Coming out match. next. So did he take the, t- the, the belt from you? Because you, lost, yeah, you yeah. lost the Commonwealth, didn't you? Is yeah, that, right? that was in that fight, yeah. I was right. Okay. And how long ago was that? Not that it was the, the fight before the last one. So that oh, was right, in okay. October. I think okay. it was October. Was it October? About October, wasn't it? Right. So, so you see them all sort of like beforehand, like sort of sparring up against each other and like, you know, getting really mm. close and in their face. Is that actually true or is that all for show? Probably more the headliners and stuff, isn't it? I think, I think nowadays everyone is so desperate, really desperate to look at me on camera. Mm. Yeah. So they act like fucking yeah. twats. And yeah. Some some people ain't like that. Man. Some yes. people will do something on the spot because they're not like that. you know what I mean. So some people act in a manner on camera, but they're not like that on camera. Then some people are just leery all the time. Yeah. 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 But it's they're they're stretching things now where I think it's only going to be a matter of time before someone does something to someone at the. Weighing or whatever, when yeah. when someone's allowed to push the boundaries too far, and you have got someone who ain't who's not like that, and they're gonna do something. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So, have you ever had any any of that from one of your opponents giving it large, getting in your face? No, not yet. That's good. <laughs> not That's yet, how it is. should be. Because all they're trying to do is get asses on seats. Really, that's what they think they're trying to do, isn't it? When they're doing all this. Again, it's it's for the look at me on camera. Yeah. Like mm. everything nowadays is they don't care in any form of camera or media. They don't care if it's if you if your job is to broadcast something, whether it's the truth hurts people's feelings or mm. it's just to get it out there. Yeah. Mm. And nowadays people get on camera and they don't care what they're saying, what they're doing, how they're behaving. They're just on camera. So look at me. Mm. I just think it's wrong, man. Mm. You know what mm. I mean? Because you're pretty cool, calm, and collected there, aren't you? When you're doing weigh-ins and things like that. Well, t- to me, the weigh-ins and the press conferences is, I enjoy doing everything about my job, right? But that, to my, a lot of these boys, that is more important in the fight. They will play up at a press conference, fighting someone they know 100% that has been brought in for them to beat. Mm. So they're going to act like that. You can act like right. that. Mm. So they're, they're going mad about this and that, and they know 100% that that boy has been brought in to make them look good. And I, I, I don't. Yeah, what's understand. the point? In no, that? I don't, yeah. don't understand it. I, but whereas I'd rather, I'd rather people talk you? about me with my fight than talk about how I behave like a dickhead at the press yeah, conference. No, I understand. I'd yeah. rather have a good, a real good fight, yeah. and have be known for that. No. Yeah. Have you ever been told you've got to lose, or is no, that just... sure? Does no, that... I, I, I'm going to add it now. I got asked at one fight. Um, I heard someone saying about having a move round with their opponent and I said you're there and I made it loud and clear that the fellow I'm fighting is earning more money than me 
because he was filling in on the day. I was supposed to fight someone else, but he had a, who was unbeaten in four or five. He had a family tragedy, so he couldn't make it, which I fully understand. So his friend filled in, who was like um, was a journeyman, and I I sold a load of tickets. So I thought, fuck it, I'll do it. But yeah. I wanted, I'd rather have the other fight. But I said, he's earning more money than me, so he's going to earn it mm. right. tonight because I'm only earning a couple of hundred quid. He's earning from 1,200, 1,400 pounds out of me. But he's earning it tonight. And I would never rig a fight for no one. Mm. Have you ever been approached about that? No, that was the closest it's ever been. Yeah. I could hear him mentioning it and I'm thinking it's only going to be, they're going to test the water by, someone's going to mention it. Look, look, would you move the, and in my head. When, I'm, when you say, would you move the. Move them around. Move them around. I don't it's understand even, that term. Don't, don't. Hurt them because they right. their men fight every week, right? So, but the right. problem, the thing okay. is now is Would everyone is right. everyone is bringing it up. Everyone's talking about it and everyone's mentioning it. And I I said it a very long time ago. I was fighting um hard very early, mm. and I never understood the, the motion of I don't I didn't want fifteen journeymen on my record because when I stopped boxing and my kid goes to me. Dad, how comes you're fighting a fella and he's got 200 fights with four wins? Yeah. yeah. And then that fella, you've got about 15 of them on there. Why have you got a whole record of them but you've only fought three good boys and you've lost? Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. all that about? Yeah. And you... No. Nah. What do because you say? you feel that? like a fraud, wouldn't you? You'll, you sit back, you'll sit back, look at your record and think, it means nothing, mm. wouldn't you? Not only that, people are... I'm selling tickets. Yeah. What, yeah. And, I, and, I've made, and, and I'm now going to glorify a, a movement it's almost a, a, like like pretending mm. and they've all gone out their way to come all the way up to London yeah. park everywhere train fair whatever and they're going to watch me fight some for four rounds six rounds and it's going to be fucking boring mm. I understand I yeah. didn't want to do that that's why when the phone rings for me to go away mm. or whatever I think yeah so it's a, money it's a real fight and when you win, you go right up the ratings, yeah. right in the top 10, mm. and you get big, big fights now. Mm. Do you know, so it's them risks that people don't, won't do, to me, have been worth it. And I'll I keep doing it. No, that's the right way to be. Definitely. Yeah, I think so. Definitely. So, um, right, you're 32 now. When do you think you'll be done? Any idea? Just based on fitness, maybe? Obviously, the heavyweights, they last in their 40s, don't they? But um, your weight, what would you say? I think lifestyle plays a big part in it mm. and I, I live a very clean like I don't eat shit and I don't party every weekend and, and whatever I train every every single day what is your what do you eat usually what are you I getting eat, tips? yeah I want to fucking lose some weight <laughs> uh, I eat a lot of porridge um, a lot of bananas I eat a lot of eggs I, right. I blend a lot of food like if I make a shake right okay I put um, oh, do you, don't, you don't do that raw egg stuff do you I crack the raw eggs in with what I mix in with it. So I'll do like an avocado. You give it all that though, Rach, yeah. right? You'll make a cake mix, That's right? And, and then fucking eat that. It does taste nicer. <laughs> There's good sugar in that in though, isn't it? Like a type of sugar, so it's nice. But this, it doesn't taste nice what I, yeah. what I drink. It's like an avocado, three eggs, a banana. I might put, might put a little bit of honey in it. Mm. Um, and then I put a stuff called um, maca root in with it. Okay. It's like a Peruvian root. Oh, is that like the green? Is it green? No, this no, is you're like on about AG1, like um, ain't you? Athletic no. greens. It's like a brown. It's, it's fucking repulsive. It's oh. really horrible. Just like so you are literally. No, I do. You're, <laughs> you're not eating for pleasure one bit. No, not not when I'm not with that. And then my pleasure would be steak. Yeah, I, I like a, I like a burger. I mm. like a yeah. burger and things. Mm. Um, do you love the bread as much as you can? Yeah, I don't really. I don't. Really, I find bread gives me my fucking bad, terrible heartburn. Yeah, so I, I just don't really eat it anyway. You know, yeah, but, um, yeah. I eat a lot before I, I did the, the no carb diet where it was just red meat and it I've always and been successful with that my nutritionist said to me for the fighting no Lou you need carbs certain carbs on certain days so now I eat a lot of sweet potatoes and, things. and do you know what it, like the, it does work mm. because the last fight I got on the scales at 69 and I didn't even have to dehydrate and I got in the ring at 78.9 kilo just through the, the foods this man mm. instructed me to eat mm. and what to drink at certain times after the foods. I thought, fucking hell, like. And I felt like I could fight all night. Carbs because carbs are like potatoes and pasta and all that sort of business, yeah. isn't it? So you're doing that before a fight, it gives you the prolonged energy, well, the, isn't it? The sweet potatoes I find are really good for you. I really I feel a difference eating a lot of them with my with my yeah. dinners. I eat a lot of fish, 
I still eat a lot of red meat. I love red meat. Mm. Um, I fucking hate chicken, but I eat it. Really? Yeah. Don't like chicken because it's just boring. People say that chicken, oh, chicken's so, it ain't it's nice. It's only good it's when it's got so flavour in it. It's yeah. so black. I like the skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you give me just a chicken breast, it'd yeah. take me hours to eat it. I yeah, fucking they, hate they it. They say yeah. chicken's nice because they're going to a place like Nando's where it's been seasoned and it's got <laughs> yeah. everything on it. Do you know what I mean? Ch- even then, you take the skin off and the white meat is still... It is boring. It's boring. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. Stews. I eat a lot of stew. Right, okay. Because you, it's, they're really good for you because the meat, obviously, whatever you're cooking, the meat goes out into the juice. So you, yeah. you're getting every bit of nutrition in yeah. as much as you can. That's so, basically my diet. So if you've won a big fight and mm. your first meal to celebrate, mm. obviously have a few drinks, what would that mm. be then? If you could, because obviously yeah, what you're would not... go down with that vodka? Yeah. <laughs> I like a uh, beer, Guinness. I like a Guinness. Oh, really? I can't yeah. stand the stuff. No? <laughs> can't stand it, no. I like a Guinness. I like a baby um, Guinness, but that's got no Guinness in it at all, is it? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no, no. Uh, uh, what's what's in that? That's, that's like coffee, yeah. Like yeah. Tia coffee. Maria, yeah. That, isn't it? And, and Bailey's. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, Tia, Tia Maria and Bailey's. Bailey's. Yeah. I drink like Del Boy, yeah. mate, honestly. He's the best. <laughs> no, I'm really the top. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my favourite is like Malibu and Coke. Honestly, I'm unbelievable. With a little umbrella like a Guinness. Yeah. So yeah. So you just want to fight? What would you like? Would you celebrate? Because obviously you're not in training after that for a little while, are you? I imagine no. you're straight back in the gym, yeah, though. Sometimes I go, but the same week I'll go back in the gym. Oh. I like. I enjoy the, 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 but especially now where I'm able to train every day. Mm. But again, that going back to the mental health side of it, exercising is a massive form of mental health and everything like that as well. Well, that's yeah. it, yeah. So yeah. maybe that's why, because he is so, sorry, I'm talking like you're not here, like he's so <laughs> clued yeah. on yeah. that we Sit in that corner a bit while we chat about <laughs> it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. that may be it, because he's constantly at the gym. Yeah, it is a good form of, yeah. 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 I, just, I think, depending on what sort of hardships you've been through, yeah, right, you don't need to sit in a dark cloud all the time. Mm. I think you're either very mentally strong or you're not. Mm. And if you are going to go through your, this is what I say to my, my two boys, you're going to go through life as a victim, be prepared to get nowhere. Mm. You've Absolutely. taken life by the bollocks is what you're You're not going to get anywhere. Me and him were saying, talking to each other the other day, weren't we? And I said, there's a, there's a, a term that I use for boxing all the time. Yeah? And it should be for boxing. And it's called, I say it to my boys all the time, <clears throat> Gabos, right? Right. Game ain't based on sympathy. Mm. You can sit there and sympathise with yourself all the time about, about nothing and you're a victim and everything, right? or you can just get on with it. Absolutely. And you're not allowed to say this anymore. You can't say "suck it up" and "man, man up." Or, <laughs> you, you can't do that. You can't can't say that. You you can. Sometimes it's mm. fucking. This. I tell myself that like, when I've lost, mm. I say that to myself all the time. Mm. That's your fault. Mm. Fucking suck it up. Thing is, everyone's different, and that's that's the basically it in life. Everyone's different. Yeah. You can handle it, and some other people some can't handle it. Yeah. You know, it's just the way it is. It's played on. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's played on by some. Yeah, uh, of know. course it is. But the ones but, that are not yeah. are overlooked. I know, I know people that have got kids like you say, and before they've even told me their name, they've told me what's wrong with them. Mm. And that drives me nuts. Right, and these man. kids look up, these kids are right. And, you know, we've had people in, we've had um, Kelly in, Milano in from Club Awesome, mm. talking about autistic kids. And these kids are autistic. They need, they don't need help. They just need, they need companionship with other people that are similar to them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But there are these in between sort of kids that you think yeah. it just needs a different mindset. You know, mm. some of them just need a different mindset. And, some uh, kids just need direct, they're repeating. What they're hearing, yeah. these, these, yeah. these yeah. children, yeah. and they're and, sit- and it's almost like a brand, isn't it? Oh, my friend's got it, so I'm gonna play up to it. And it's- my boy went on a, a prime when he was in primary school on a school trip, and he got rock climbing, abseiling, whatever. My boy is huh? lively, mm. and he come back. I said, "Do you have a good time?" He went, "No." I suppose it's one of the boys in the thing. He's a bit of mine in year year six, um, suicidal. I'm this and that and whatever. And when he when they'd asked him, he said, Oh, well, I hear it at home all the time because if things don't go their way, that it struggle mentally and whatever. And I said, So ruining this kid don't even don't even doesn't, doesn't even know what it is. Yeah. He's too young. Yeah. And he said it it ruined. Because he, he said, Oh, we had to stop everything and the teachers wouldn't let us do anything. Yeah. So so we all just sort of sat there and sad, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it ruined it for kid, everyone else. This kid don't get to have his own brain. Well, it's all he's used to. 
It's all mm. this in. It's all this in. Like you can go on holiday, you get on a plane, everyone sits down, they put their bags down, and then you get this one family come through, and everything's a fucking panic. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Quick, sit there, you sit there, you sit there. And they're that, they're like that all the time. Like they're going to be left behind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they say, why do they pay extra to get on that fucking plane quicker when it's going to go off? At the same <laughs> no, no, so we're like, we're like, no, we yeah, crack we'll up that. <laughs> we watch them all. Anyone with speedy boarding, I should say, any fucking mugs. <laughs> <laughs> they want to give in, us the some mugs that are paid extra twenty quid to get on a fucking plane earlier. You do know it's taking off at the same time, you <laughs> dickheads. Go, yeah. it's speaking Sorry, about. No. <laughs> I had a rant now. <laughs> Thinking about your boys and your kids then, yeah. do they want to follow in your footsteps? Do they enjoy boxing and stuff like that? No, the eldest one is he's really clever. Mm. Like, goes grammar school. And Got two boys, one daughter, yeah? Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. The eldest boy is very clever and talks another language, wants to do psychology stuff. And oh, nice. Things like that. Yeah, really, really intelligent boy. Mm. Um, he's good at football. The middle one is a bit of a I, I, love, I love the way you started that. You went, You're a little glass. <laughs> yeah, the he's, <laughs> he's like a bit more wild, like, if you like <laughs> brain all over the can't sit still. Obviously, you must get that from fucking me, unfortunately. <laughs> you know, I don't deny it either. Um, it's a bit of a bit of a tear away. But he's he's very strong. He can box. He comes he comes to the gym with me, to be fair. He comes mm. down to the gym with me. But I never I would never tell him. I always, I let him tell me. I said, I want to come to the gym. I want to come. Mm. I, I would like to fight. Coming to the gym with me is not really an option. My kids have to do something. Yeah. They're not going to be doing nothing. Not I'll make sure end, yeah. that they're going to be doing We're something. We're exactly the same, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, you know, We've got a gym thing now yeah. around here and we have the kids. The kids are on it as well. Do you yeah. know what I mean? We're all doing the same. Definitely. And, and my daughter's so excited. When she gets to 14, there's sessions at the gym for 14 plus and she's like, I can't wait to go to the gym. Can't can't wait. And I'm yeah. like, perfect. She plays come cricket as well. Plays oh, cricket. Yeah. yeah. Cricket. Does, yeah. Dances for four hours yeah. on a Friday so she bowled a six foot gazer out yesterday she's only four <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> yeah, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. yeah she was really like oh my proud God. of her <laughs> is your daughter perfect like ours the to apple me, of yeah. your eye yeah, yeah, it's a... daughter, yeah. I've got four enough. boys one girl oh, huh? yeah wrapped her up not me no. oh no not fucking hell <laughs> my eldest, my eldest is 30 mate two years younger than you my youngest oh. is eight yeah I sprayed the old Right. Spread the old semen about. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say that on a podcast. But, yeah. Yeah. but if they wanted to, you would encourage it. What about your little girl? If she wanted to get into boxing, would you encourage her? Or is that a bit of a no no area? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'll go with whatever they're interested in. I take a massive interest mm. and I just let them tell me about it. Mm. Do you know? But if anyone would do it, it'd be the, the middle child because he, he can box. Mm. He's, he's actually. Mm. Good. He's very strong, got very heavy hands. But I take him to the gym with me nearly every time I go, make sure mm. that he's in there doing something and he's he's knackered. And I've actually got a thing going with his school one where they want me to go in the school and talk to the kids that misbehave and do like a P class of them. Nice. Yeah. You so, talk about your life when you was a kid, knocking around and how uh, this is... Hey, in, a yeah, way. But in a way, though, I, I'm not convinced that this you starting boxing has actually changed... How you was. was it just player. gave you something else to do. Didn't really make you. Did it make you more disciplined? Would you say? Yeah, because I was disciplined I to, as in you I went down there. Smoke was, on it. So. Yeah, that's right. You stopped it the day you went in that ring, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, into the club. I, I threw the I puff. I threw the puff and away and the fags. Had your full puff at that age as well. Don't ask questions like that. <laughs> oh yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, no, you said before you you went nicking and stuff, didn't you? Yeah, I was, I was a, I was a fucking nightmare as a kid, mate. Always, um, I see a, a boxer once said he nicked any like if it had an A in it, he'd have it. And the bloke went to him, "What's that?" And he went, "Anything." <laughs> like, so <laughs> when I was a kid, um, he used that to your advantage. Yeah. It's weird, though, isn't it? It must have been who you was knocking around with because your dad wasn't like that. No, my my dad's family are. Um, Madmen. When they were young, they were right, okay. madmen. My, but my dad is really um, straight laced, quiet, um, relaxed. The only time he he like rare up is with the boxing. He gets excited about yeah, it, and course, he loves yeah. the fights and things. Yeah. But just day to day, he's, mm. you won't find him. He's fucking so chilled out. Mm. Is your mum still with us, or are you, your mum and dad together? Were they? No, mum and dad ain't together. My mum right. lives up. That's why I, I moved up here. I was with my dad, and then I right. moved up here because I was. But it, coming up here, 
And you still see your mum or? Yeah, yeah. yeah every okay. every single day. I lived with my mum and then I moved out with when I obviously with, with the children and things yeah. when I was like sixteen. So I see my mum every I'm at, I'm at my mum's every day. Oh right. Yeah, okay. she only lives there. She lives she lives just down the road. I've just come from Right, her. sorry, so your dad's the one that's up there. My dad lived down right, there okay. and he used to drive up here to come to the gym and then drive back down. Right, so I, I see. Mean. Right, yeah. But yeah. I had to move up here when my mum was there. Right. Mm. What school did you go to around here? Well, when you did I go. went to, to Temple School for about a week. Oh, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. going to be up there, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I went there for about a week. And I had I like two lessons a day. And yeah. then I got a job. So I never went up all fucking. But the thing is, if you'd left and gone, I'm not going to do anything, then oh, that would yeah. be a different story. But you yeah. left, you got a job, you got a career. Yeah, it's not as if you it's, just yeah. bummed around. Yeah. Well, no, the, the, the bloke who... There was a bloke up here... I still talk to him sometimes, to be fair. He, uh, he come, Lou, he calls him murders in school. My mate needs a lane, but so I went, all right, sweet. And then that was it. I, I just never went in. Mm -hmm. Right. I just was doing that, laying slabs and helping him plaster and everything like that. Mm. And my dad, to be fair, he was all right with it. Mm. He didn't. Well, you, you did something. You know yeah, I mean? well, he rang me mum. He said, like, as long as you're doing something. Yeah. What, yeah. what, what month are you born? You, uh, July. Like, July. July. So, you know, you would have finished early anyway. You was only one more year, in theory, because I was done at school by 15 because I'm an August kid. Mm. So, you ain't, you ain't missed a year. All right, you probably didn't go when you were. No, there. I never went, really. <laughs> I'm trying to big you up here, mate. No, I, I, I've got nothing to be bigged up about when it comes to <laughs> educational purposes. Right. That but how? you found your place in life. That's the thing. That's all that matters. You found if your... I, if I had nothing physical, I'd be... Fat, mate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so if you, if your kids turn around to you and did exactly the same, how would you feel? Well, yeah. How would you deal with it? That with with what that second so boy that, being like you? Yeah. If how would you deal with that? Said, what if he didn't want 13, to go to school? 14, if he was like you yeah. as your at your age? School. If I be honest, school to me is I'm not really. I make sure they go because I want them to read, right? Mm. Um, but school to me is not a necessity for, for my, because they don't teach kids how to live a life. No, they I, just, I agree with They you. just teach kids things. So I keep my kids sometimes. I'll say to my boy, we go to the gym and I take him to the gym with me. And I, I keep him out of school for the day. I take him to the gym and things like that because I just had a meeting in the school mm. with my boy's teach, And he asked me what he thinks, what do I think he should do with these kids? And I said to him, you're a professional teacher. You should you're a teacher. This <laughs> is your profession. And you were asking advice from me to do with these kids. And yeah. my son... Is looking at you, looking up to you, thinking, "What are you going to?" I said, "I trust you life? with my yeah. children." Kids, yeah, yeah. They, they end up having them more than the parents. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. He said, they "Work openly, out the hours of a day." They got them six hours, they, every, you know, every yeah. day. That's exactly what I said to this bloke in a, in a meeting. Mm. And my son said, uh, I, "I'll blatantly blackmail you to play football mm -hmm. if if I you reward my bad behaviour." He's only twelve, and I said to the teachers, "All them other kids in the class were good." Mm. They don't get to play football on a Friday. Mm. But this, my son, will wind you up. And if he don't, you let him play football. <laughs> so that, how's that right? Yeah. How's yeah. that fair? So yeah. That's what you're teaching kids. Yeah. yeah. And he just didn't know what to say to me. Mm. So he's rewarding him for just being yeah. what the other kids are like all the time. Basically, Because yeah. our daughter, yeah. our, a very long-winded story, basically our, in, tech, in grammar school, you get positive points, don't you? When mm -hmm. you've been good, you've been you been naughty and you get taken away and she she had an assembly the other day and she was really embarrassed and said oh my god i've got you know this positive thing in assembly and i had to stand up and get an award and i went tills that's, that's amazing and she just said yeah but all it is is they're just rewarding me just being me and being good she went why can't everyone else be like that and i was like because everyone isn't like that and yeah, she right. and i just said but it's a good thing that they're yeah. recognizing your behavior yeah, definitely absolutely but yeah it's it's hard it's a hard one because they don't teach life lessons you know if you could mm -hmm. teach taxes you know all this stuff that would help mm. you run a business run your own company but they don't they mm. teach things that aren't really gonna well help there's a few you. schools now isn't there? there's a few schools. i can't remember what country it is but they get them to make the the school dinner mm. so they're doing being chefs teach and yeah mm. they get, teach them to cook or teach them to iron mm. they're getting you know, they're doing the yeah, proper absolutely. stuff that would give them life lessons yeah, yeah. that's life what they should be teaching mm. these kids to yeah be, to yeah be doing. Mm. it's a waste of time otherwise mm. oh, that's just what i think mm. yeah yeah, 
you know, obviously they need to learn the English. They need to learn the maths. That's yeah. going to help a lot, yeah. you know, as much as they can. But then the life lessons need to be learned Absolutely. as well. Absolutely. Blimey, we're drifting off, aren't we? We're, we're sorting the world out here, mate, <laughs> mate. And it's right, mate. Yeah. Right. I, I have one question. For Go on you. then. Oh, so on. if you, oh, no, it's a good one. It's not what's your favourite colour or something. <laughs> <like that>. <laughs> <laughs> if you could fight anyone, alive or dead, and there was no sort of stigma around it, there was no sort of, oh, you have to do no this. No wait. You could just fight anyone you want. Be you and him in a ring, promoted, unpromoted, doesn't matter. Who would it be? Well, it could be a girl. Sorry, you and that person. Oh, that's I it. don't believe in any of <laughs> that. Be politically um, correct, right? That's it. So I've never, I've been asked that before and I, I never really knew, but there's a, one fella that there's no, there's no footage of him actually fighting. His name's Harry Greb. Have you ever heard of him? Mm. Never heard of Harry Greb? Harry no. Greb, no. Only man to beat Gene Tunney. And he beat my favourite fighter, Jack Dempsey, that Tunney. Um, so I'd like to see what that was about because apparently he's meant to be um, like the, the greatest ever. right and what's he old died now yeah he's not about he was back in the, like the what they call the roaring 20s wasn't he he was back right, in the, okay. back in that okay bit, right? bit of this business no he was a, a, a proper he used to train with Jack Dempsey my favourite right. That's there was a big statement about him I got his book Okay. I ain't read it though. <laughs> but I've got it. I've got it. I just look at the pictures. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd like because there's I've only there's only footage of him training, but there's no footage of his fights anywhere. Oh, oh right. Okay. So it's all rumor. Mm. So I'd like see. to know, mm. see what it's like. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's cool. So look, you haven't picked like something everyone would know. Yeah. Someone everyone would know. Yeah. Harry Grip. Yeah. yeah. You looking him up? <laughs> yeah. It says he died at 32. Yeah, yeah, one Jesus. eye and all. Wow. He, he won that Polish geyser, was he? <laughs> <laughs> he had, uh, I think he went unbeaten in one year. He had about 80 fights in a year or something. Wow. Something like that, yeah. He had one oh, eye. Nice. So do you ever look at these people and sort of look up to people and go, actually, I, I want to learn that te technique or I want yeah. to do that. And you take little bits from everyone. So you're just learn. You're still, still learning. You haven't got your own style that you're going to stick with. You just No, I know what I am. I'm, I've done, I've always been um, straight out, fight right away, um, swinging big bombs. But I, my dad just crafted it for longer rounds because I can fight, I've got a good engine so I can fight very long and up. I find that if I slow down mid rounds, I know that I get the, like a second wind and I can fight very hard yeah. for the next six. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. something I found in myself that I get, I get a real good second wind. Yeah, really, really quickly in, in the fight. And I know you mentioned you had a couple of rounds where, where you were jabbing, jabbing, keeping them off with a jab. Mm. Do you change, mix it up a bit if they start getting used to your style? Because you're right in there, and you know you're right yeah, in there with head on the chest. Yes, um, I love that head on the chest. He's never going to fucking hit you if your head's on their chest. I've, yeah, some, <laughs> do you know I, what I, mean? I get a I little, I get a few stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. but now I think you are, you are who you are. Yeah, and mm, when yeah. I've had one boy that like, like a newspaper phone me, his boy's going to pull tricks out of the bag and he's going to do things you've never seen. I said, unless he's got a third arm, <laughs> like it's um, you're only you're limited, mate. Yeah. You've yeah. all got two yeah. hands. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So I, I don't really think of that. But the the fellas I look up to was say Jack purely because of, when I was in that gym the, the trainer would slate me for moving my head and and not doing what he was teaching but he's, it didn't fit for everyone not you can't mm. teach one style for every every person mm. do you know what I mean mm. and he's trying to teach me the box how he's used to mm. like long and it was off of a DVD that, he, that he'd watched <laughs> as, an am, as an amateur he'd put this DVD on and I was just, look you can do that, but doing it in there is, is different. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, no, I completely understand mm. that. You know, if that was the case, everyone would be doing karate with exactly the same technique. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Well, you would have no boxing. Yeah. Mm. It would just, there would be no style. Yeah, yeah exactly. Absolutely. Right, let's talk about your upcoming fight then. So it's yeah. the um, British and Commonwealth title. Yeah. Um, and uh, so this is a rematch. Yeah. Um, we think it's end of August, don't we? Tomorrow, I, I should find out about it, yeah. I thought you can say it's fucking tomorrow, then. No, no, no. no. <laughs> so what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, okay, you find out tomorrow. Yeah, That'd be good. Hopefully. Yeah. If we're free, we're going to try and get up to see you. Mm. Yeah, you come up there. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. We'd love to do that. Um, as we know you now, we're going to follow you, you know. I've right. never been to a boxing Not actually follow you out of the studio, just follow you out. <laughs> Stalk like, him. stalkers. <laughs> um, oh, I forgot what I was going to say now. Um, what was I going to say? 
the upcoming fight. Yeah, so you're looking for sponsorships for this yeah. fight, yeah? Yeah. Right, okay. So um, we'll get some people. We'll talk to people, see if we can help you out on that. It'd be brilliant. Do you have um, a set colours that you always come out in play? Yeah, fight? I have um, my shorts are jet black. It's Tyson, see? With uh, green on them. And I've got my name on the front. Is that a bit of your Irish Irish oh, heritage? Irish, yeah, for my, my dad's dad, yeah. Um, and I've got a green shamrock, yeah. I've got my mate's little girl on the back, name on the back, because she's very unwell. Remember you oh. mentioned, oh, she's yeah. still with us. She's still here. Right, okay. Um, yeah, she's she's very unwell. So I'll, I'll keep I'll keep her name on, on the back of my shorts. Is she from this area or somewhere? They used to live down here, and he he moved up to where his wife is from up um, I think she's in Yorkshire. Oh, right, yeah, okay. So he lives up there. But I speak to him every day. Yeah. Um, and uh, they, you don't have to go too deep, but like we know, we've had the males are here, are yeah. brilliant with kids, you know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can put them into them if they need any. They're amazing. They're um, amazing. But they may have all the help they need. Uh, to be fair, it's, it's, I don't, when, he, when he's talking to me, they're at the hospital all the time because uh, the uh, they got, News that they thought was going to be very good, like, and they mm. went back because she'd been ve feeling very unwell. Mm. He's been sick, um, so the, the tumor has grown a little bit, mm. which obviously is mm. so it's not, it's not, it's not good. No, they know that, obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, mm. but I have her name on my on my shorts, and I'll, I'll always keep it there. Oh, that's, that's good, that's it's really nice. So, unfortunate because you get I get people message me about things, and I'll you just you limit to what you can do. You can't. Absolutely. You know, but you feel bad because they're children, mate. Like, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You want yeah, to, of course. Fucking help with more so when it comes to sponsorship, is that on your your your? Cloak yeah, I, ad I advertise that. Um, so like you know, social it, media. And I don't things. know what the limited is. Are you limited to what you can have on your shorts, sponsorship wise. I'm no, sure. to be fair, I don't wear it on my shorts because when I walk out, it's on your robe. I have I have I train in all, all the track suits and the t-shirts and I go to the press conferences and I wear all the stuff so they sit all over I the see. TV but mm. when I fight my dad and all my people in my corner they have it on so it's advertised all night I right. see whereas okay. when I walk out I just have my shorts on I don't have nothing on no top just boots and shorts so that I feel like I'm ready to fucking get it on yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah that's good because I did come up with a suggestion gosh that you won't fucking do this <laughs> Put a cone on, have a traffic cone hat on your head. Because right. you know that fucking... Uh, fucking the guy in Chatham. You know the... Oh, the guy doing in Chatham, the statue. Oh, yeah. I didn't even remember. Oh, imagine that. <laughs> and they're like, why is that? Why is he got that? Because everyone only in Chatham are going yeah. mad about it. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they do know, because he's from Norfleet. Uh, yeah, I'm a Norfleet, because you did a bit of training Grey's End, didn't you? So I was born yeah, in yeah. Norfleet, so... Um, I was like, what the fuck are they going on about with this um, traffic cone on this thing's head? <laughs> People <laughs> kick off when it's been taken off. Yeah. Because it's become, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's almost as fashionable as Billy the Quid now, isn't yeah. it? Like, he's yeah. Part yeah. Of yeah. <laughs> yes. So you need to, yeah, to, to come out when you, when you know, you're champion, world champion, have a traffic cone <laughs> on your head. You're looking menacing and now, cone on my head. Officially now, it's my idea if that happens. <laughs> so, so with regards to your fights, do you ever let your family come and watch you? Or do they? Kids, do, boys. Just stay. They watch it at home. But um, you don't actually have them with you. I've had I've had all like my family coming to my fights and, and things and watch my fights and stuff. Mm. But um What's your nah, daughter, daughter like about it? My daughter's quite mad, well I would be fair. She's um <laughs> she's watching one of my because I don't really watch my fights back. Oh right. I'm not really I don't really do it because someone said it to me and I said I was there. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I, don't I don't really I don't again. like yeah, my dad will antagonise my mind of it. Like he that's all he will go on about. Whereas I'm in the gym every day. I'm running early hours of the morning. Once I finish the gym, I'm in the gym late in the, in the evening. The last thing I want to do is go and watch my fights again mm. because I've got another one coming up. Do you know, so I'll say, you concentrate on that. Oh, so he like, analyzes Right, so it. he's oh, going to be the one that tells you about it and you adjust based on it. I'll, I'll watch close to the fight. I'll watch things that I need to, mm -hmm. maybe. But at the last fight, they were saying to me, did you watch your opponent? And I said, no, because... I was told he's he's big. He was he was big. I was told he's he's going to be a lump and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. He's going to do that. And I sort of like the feeling of that that uncomfortable feeling. Okay, this is very uncomfortable. It's not. Um, this is what I mean about when when people are going mad, giving it the beginning of their opponent, and they know that that boy is losing. I don't know that because I'm brought in to lose. Yeah, you want to feel like a David and Goliath. There was a, thing, a, a podcast every podcast I saw this bloke was going I think Louis Green can lose in four rounds and 
And I saved that on my phone. On my phone, I've got a, a poll from when I went up to Scotland and it was 97% of people said I was going to lose in the first four rounds, in the first five rounds. And then when I went to Poland, they said I was going to get knocked out. That was 98% of the public. So I saved them on there. So show if I'm ever asked, I can show you the, mm, yeah. what people mm. voted. And I'll read them. I look at that mm. and I think I use that. But the, the feeling Good. of being uncomfortable in a weird way is quite comfortable. Mm. Do you know? Yeah. yeah you feel like you're going to benefit. A bit of edge. Bit yeah, yeah, you feel like you're going to benefit. Yeah. If, you, if you felt comfortable every day, you would be going nowhere in life. That's what I think. Yeah. That's so exactly I like the excitement yeah. of being away from home. Out of your comfort zone. Yeah. At being out of your comfort zone. I like that. So when I when I got there, I thought, yeah, he's a lump. He's a lump. He was very big. He come in very heavy. Uh -huh. um, you could but I, yeah. yeah, when when the, the, the fight went... I thought I'm just going to go straight at him. Mm. And um, my dad getting out of the ring, he's fucking get him. And when, when the bell went, I boom, was out. I was up, up for it, you know. Brilliant. Would you ever do something like UFC? Where, like, no, I was going to ask that. <laughs> like no holes. I'm a no huge fan of, of yeah. UFC. Yeah. I actually watch that every day. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah, I love a bit of UFC. I watch that. But once again, I'm shit with the names. <laughs> shit with the names. It depends. I can name a lot of the old... I like old Derek, the, old the big bloke. It was Derek, um, Derek Lewis. Oh, the, the, did he do the interview? But my nuts are sweaty. That's him. My, yeah, yeah. My, yeah, my balls yeah. are hot. Yeah, my, my balls are sweaty. <laughs> yeah, I love Derek yeah. Lewis. Yeah, I think he, he won recently, fight. actually. Yeah, he can fight. He's he can, but he's like a, just a pounder, isn't he? Yeah, he's just, just got a big sledgehammer. Yeah. yeah. And he goes out there swinging it, doesn't he? Yeah. But I'm a huge fan of... Would, would you ever get in the ring and do that? Would you do it? Like it's another discipline, isn't it? I though? would like to any anything f to do with um, the army coming through with combat sports. I find enticing. Do you know what I mean? Right. I like to. I really even like the the army thing. I watch about it on the, the TV when they. Oh, like the SAS. Are, are you tough yeah, enough yeah, type thing? Yeah. 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 No. When they, did you see when they was in Afghanistan and it was the soldiers talking about their stories and their training right, yes, and yes, their yes, actual yes. video clips mm. of them in combat yes, and yes, things yes, like, yes, like yeah. that sort of stuff? Yeah. Like fires me up. I think, mm. oh, imagine that. Mm. It's like it's exciting, isn't it? Mm. You know. Mm. Yeah. And your in ring music, I did hear it about this. It's Last of the Mohicans and Song of That. And yeah, I never yeah. got a chance to listen to it because I haven't got a clue what you're talking about with that. Nah. <laughs> we I don't think we can. For, <laughs> we can't do it, can we? We have to, have to listen to it afterwards. Listen to it after, yeah. But I'm also going to nick their idea of asking their guests what their favourite song is and making a playlist. Yeah, do it. Mine's... Yeah, sorry, I have gonna, I'm going to steal that. It's a really good idea. Last of the Mohicans, the Gales, it's the end bit. The Gales and Last of the Mohicans. Yeah. Right. Do you know what? I don't even know if I've seen Last of the Mohicans. Oh, you've got to watch it. Great film. You watched mm -hmm. it twice a day or something. When yeah. I was a little boy, I was hooked with that film and I used to watch it every single day without fail. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've got to watch it now. Yeah, I definitely. I have seen it. No? That's on our to-do list then. <laughs> yeah, it's on our to-do list. Right. Have we it. covered everything? I think we covered everything, haven't we? Unless you've yeah. got anything else no, you want to talk no. about. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on. Thank you for having me. I wish brilliant. you Amazing. all the best. We're going to follow you now till the end of your career because yeah, you're sure. you are generally a decent bloke. Honestly, I know you've had a you know been a shit when you grow up, <laughs> yeah, right. but you, you've got your head screwed on. Hopefully, Absolutely. it doesn't get fucking knocked off. No yeah. way. And um, <laughs> yeah, we wish you all the best, and we're going to follow you, and we'll try and help you out with some sponsorship as well. Mm. That'd be brilliant. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, yeah, sorry. One thing I didn't we didn't ask is what are you plan on doing when it's over. You plan on coaching or? That's a good question. Drinking a few beers. <laughs> Back on the old... <laughs> watching <laughs> watching people out the window running at four in the morning in a pissing rain thinking, I fucking miss that. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Right, that's it. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Uh, thanks Thank for watching. So um, obviously, Louis Green, um, the Medway Mauler. We started following you on um, Insta, so mm -hmm. we got that. That's under Louis Green, in it? Mm -hmm. And Facebook, I think, and all. Yeah. So, mate. brilliant. Yeah, we're keeping an eye on you, mate. Thank you. you so much and, um, for coming out. Yeah, we might do a little, if we get to see the fight or get to a, one of your fights, we'll do a little podcast sort of thing while you're Watch ringside it, yeah. or we're ringside. Yeah. Absolutely. But it's been really good to meet yeah, you, mate. Thank you. Thank you so much thank for coming you so on. Much. Thank you. Brilliant.